everybody, Anthony Sequera here with Stormwind.com, and I am thrilled that you're joining me for this discussion of routing, particularly routing protocols. Hey, by the way, I'd like to welcome everyone here that is reading my book. That's right. Uh, this is a video that was made especially for my text for Cisco Press, and it's the ICND1 Foundation Learning Guide, 4th Edition. By the way, if you're interested in buying my book, I'd love you to do that. Please buy my book. Let me show you how you can find my book. Just go to Google and type in ICND1 and type foundation, if I can spell it, and then fourth. Why you want to put the fourth in there is because you want to make sure you are looking at the fourth edition of the ICND1 Foundation Learning Guide. This is the edition that deals with CCNA version 2. Yeah, the latest, greatest CCNA, at least during the time of this recording that I'm making right now. So, Google search ICND1 Foundation 4th, and you'll be driven to that book. Now, let's jump into the material because some of you already have the book and you could care less about what I'm saying right now. Let's talk routing protocols. You know, there are so many different ways to categorize our routing protocols. It's amazing. And that's what I wanted to clarify for you right now. The first way in which we can categorize them is called classful versus classless. Now, what's funny about this is we know that we want to be classy in life. So you might think that classful is the way to go. No, 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 no. This is the one time in life where we want to actually have no class whatsoever. Classless protocols are actually superior to classful protocols. You see, classful protocols do not send subnet mask information with updates. Yeah, they do not send subnet mask information. What does this mean? It means we cannot take advantage of variable length subnet masking, if I can get those letters right. With classless routing protocols, we do send subnet mask information, and we can take advantage of variable length subnet masking. Now, classful routing protocols are pretty much dead. IGRP is one of those, and Cisco doesn't even install that on routers anymore. RIP version 1 is one of those, but nobody in their right mind wants to run RIP version 1 anymore. Classless routing protocols are like EIGRP, RIP version 2, and how about OSPF? Yeah, all of our more modern protocols are going to be superior. They're not going to have any class whatsoever. Kind of interesting, right? So interesting that it pays here to be classless. Now, what is another way in which we can categorize our routing protocols? Well, we can categorize them by how they operate. You see, early routing protocols operated through something we call distance vector. The idea here is, how far away am I from a particular prefix? And in what direction do I have to go to get to that particular prefix? A very simplistic method of calculating routing information. Guess what? Early routing protocols do this. RIP version 1 and version 2 are considered distance vector routing protocols. A much more sophisticated way to go is something called a link state routing protocol. OSPF is a shining example of this. OSPF will literally hear from all the routers out there the status information about their interfaces and it will build a database. It will populate a database of this information and then from that database it will construct a map of the network 
calculating the shortest paths to particular destinations. That's why it's called the shortest path first protocol, by the way. Distance vector protocols don't do this. What they do is called routing by rumor. They just pass entire copies of the routing table to each other, and they rely on the information that their neighbors tell them. This is often called routing by rumor. This could be prone to errors because you're relying on what someone else has to say about the routing infrastructure. It actually reminds me of a game that I played in, oh, probably third or fourth grade. The teacher got us all in a circle there in the classroom, and the teacher walked up to one of the 20 students and whispered something in that student's ear. That student then whispered it to the next student. That student whispered it to the next student. By the time the phrase got all the way around the 20 students, it was completely and totally distorted. It wasn't even close to the original phrase. So that reminds me of routing by rumor, right? Where if we get a router with bad information, it will propagate that bad information along to other routers in the infrastructure. Link state doesn't suffer with that rather ludicrous issue of routing by rumor. Now, Cisco has to come along and complicate things a little bit. Cisco invents a protocol called EIGRP, and it has properties of distance vector, and it has some properties of link state. So we invented another category to classify it, and that's called a hybrid routing protocol, one that does some distance vector, does some link state. Some people take issue with this. They say, you know what? EIGRP is a heck of a lot more distance vector than it is anything else. It's an insult to link state protocols to call it that. So these people call it an advanced distance vector protocol. Either way, we know it's not pure distance vector and it's not pure link state. Now, believe it or not, there's another way we like to categorize routing protocols, and that is interior versus exterior. You see, we have a routing protocol to route between the routers in our organization, like we might choose OSPF, and this is called our IGP, our Interior Gateway Protocol. If we're going to route between our company and another company with its routers, the way in which we do this is with an EGP, Exterior Gateway Protocol. Now, there's lots of IGPs, right? OSPF, EIGRP. Uh, ISIS is a link state routing protocol that competes with OSPF. There's RIP. There's lots of those. Good news, there's only one EGP for you to memorize. What is it? Border Gateway Protocol. It's the only exterior gateway protocol that we use today. So folks, there you have a review of three major classification areas for your routing protocols. We have classless versus class full. We have, what was the second one? The second one was distance vector versus link state versus hybrid. And our third type of classification for routing protocols is is it for inside our corporate boundary or is it to route between corporate boundaries? And that's interior versus exterior.